Welcome to this Houdini notebook tutorial. This video is part of the lighting notebook and the node that we're looking at today is the geometry light. Again, we're going to be working at the LARP level, so go ahead and just switch to the Solaris desktop right over here. Again, I have the exact same scene that I've been working with where we have the lights over on the right hand side, the scene over on the left. So here's what I want to do. I want to take one of these objects and turn them into a light, but I want to tell Houdini to treat it as a light, not just as an immersive material. And I'll explain more about that a little bit later, but for now, let's just take a look at how this is done. So if we go over here to the lights tab over here, you'll see that we have all of our different lights all set up over here, and we've gone through most of them. If you're interested in the Karma Physical Sky or the light mixer, then feel free to take a look at the Mardini videos. I covered those in the Mardini daily videos. But for this one, we're just going to look at this over here, where it's called Geometry Light. If we drop this over here, you'll see that it's actually a rendered geometry settings node. So it's actually this one over here. And this node does a lot for us. You can see that there's a whole lot of different tabs under here. And from here, you can control things like your dicing for displacement. You can define how your particles are being rendered. You can define options for lights. You can change your shading options, all of these things, right? The only difference is that when we use the geometry light node and bring it in, it's just a preset. So you can see that all it's doing is it's saying treat as light sources, yes, right? So by default, this will just be do nothing, but this is the equivalent of just setting it to set or create and saying yes. Now this needs a geometry to work over or a primitive. So what we're going to do is we're firstly going to turn one of these into an emitter and then we'll work from there. So what we can do is just drop another sphere. So I'm going to add a sphere over here. I'm going to rename it to geometry underscore light, and I'm going to reduce its radius. I'm just going to move it around over here so that we just have this sitting right over here. We can now go ahead and use a material library. And inside of this material library, all I'm going to do is create a comma material. So comma material builder right over here. We can call this emissive. So there's going to be an emissive material. Over here, I'm going to go ahead and just give this a color and an emission amount. So let's just set this to something like six and make this blue, right? So that's all we have, an emissive material with a blue color. If we go over here, we can auto fill our materials and assign it to this forward slash geometry light. When I do that, you will see that it does emit light on the surfaces around it. But this takes a while to clean up and that's because it's treating this not as a geometry light, but just as an emissive material. Now, emissive materials aren't optimized to be treated as light sources. Light sources and emissive materials are treated differently by the engine. And so if you want this to be optimized and treated as a light, that's where you're going to be using our render geometry settings or the geometry light preset. Plug this in over here. And all we're going to say is over on the primitives, we're going to say forward slash geometry light. And we're going to enable this down here where we've said treat as light source. You'll see that it immediately starts rendering a bit faster and this actually cleans up a lot more easily. That's because this is now treating it as a light source. It's no longer treating it as just a piece of geometry. So do keep in mind that the intended way to work with this is for when you have objects or pieces of geometry that are fairly big. So you don't want to be doing this with lots of small particle type things that are all emissive. For that, you do actually want to keep them as emissive materials. This generally works best on large geometries that can then be treated as light sources. So that's all we have to do. Just a quick recap. All you have to do is go to your material library, create a comma material, make an emissive material, give it a color, give it an emission amount. And then all you have to do down here is just type geometry light or alternatively a render geometry settings. And on this render geometry settings, all you would do is set under the light tab Set or create for treat as light source, yes. And then all you need to do is just define which primitive to treat as a light source. So we're just going to once again, choose geometry light. And just like that, it is now being treated as a light source. So I hope that that helps you to set up geometry lights within Karma. This is really useful, right? So sometimes you just want an object to emit light. You don't want an actual light source. You want to define it by a particular geometry or shape. This is the way to do it inside of Karma. Oftentimes emissive materials aren't really optimized. And so this is how we want to be setting up our geometry if they do have emissive materials. So thank you for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye.